You're now watching Lena Blue TV. I move forward, ain't no time to reflect. You gotta pay to talk to me, it's like I'm calling collect. I'm from the ghetto where you really gotta ride for a check. Cause likely by the age of nine, you be already in debt. But listen, I was really in the field with the forest green. You house niggas in the crib like it's quarantine. Feel the pain when you look in my eyes. Instead of trying to free my mind, I'm trying to free all the guys. Can't respect the record labels, they be signing gimmicks. I'm right there, but they don't see me like the line of scrimmage. I used to hustle on the corner with no time to listen. Cause auntie had a bad bladder with no pot to pissing. I got your lady on my shit. Smoking with the pirates She say my weed Make a cough like the coronavirus I gotta think of What's a player to do uh, Fuck the ops But the police out here Killing us too yeah. Gotta watch what we be eating That be killing us too yes. Gotta watch what we be drinking That be killing us too yeah. Shit Self-employed Ain't no way that you can fire this I think they trying to kill us With the 5G wireless yeah. Purified It's that new world water Fuck the mark of the beast And that new world order Ain't no TV Little homie had to channel the force I made it through all of the pain No survival's remorse Okay, 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 uh -huh, okay. See what I see what you're doing. See, I see I what you're talking about. Right. I wash y'all. I can't talk about no brown. Thank you for taking the time to sit down with me, cool people. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I don't know if you know, but I'm very excited about this interview. Likewise. Um, I'm excited to pick your brain mm -hmm. and um, learn um, a lot more things about you. Let's have at it. So, um, your name, explain. My name. My name is Cool People, and uh, basically stands for three E's for the third I. We took out the O for oppression and added an E for equality. Mm. That's pretty much how we came up with the name, Cool People. Right. Yeah. So, um, when did you get into music? Like, when did you start? I've been doing music since middle school, mm -hmm. since I was a jit, since I was a shorty. It's always been a passion of mine, music and sports, always. So, um, do you remember the first day, like the first day that you walked into the studio? Uh -huh. um, tell us about just that feeling, just that whole day. Um, that I whole can't day. really remember the day. I remember the first experience of being in the studio. My homie had a home studio in the closet, and I was like, I gotta get me one of these. It's just freedom. I can record when I want, I can say what I want, how I want. Yeah, it was like therapy, man. It was like going to see somebody else's therapist. I was like, I gotta have my own therapist. Right. Yeah. So how did you walk out feeling? Empowered, motivated, inspired, you know what I'm saying? Definitely empowered. I was like, I can do what I want. Who gonna stop me? How you gonna stop me? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Definitely. So um, do you remember your first track that you laid down? No, I do not remember the first track I ever recorded. I do not. No? I probably got it somewhere in some crates or something, but I can't remember. I can't, nah, I can't recall. But you're formerly known as Scooter. Mm -hmm. Who is Scooter? Uh, that's those who know me personally, like my family, my friends. My teachers called me Scooter in high school and in middle school, but it was a, it's a family name. My grandma gave me that name, rest in peace to my grandhand. Yeah, she gave me that name. Why? What does it mean? I don't know. She said I used to scoot around the house all day. I used to <laughs> ride the scooter all the time. I don't know. I wish she was here to tell me again. Yeah, for sure. Scooter. And it's stuck. Yeah. It's really stuck. That's what the hood know me by. How old are you? I am 31 years young. My birthday just passed a few days ago. Shout out to all the Aries out there. Yeah. So Thank God. Birthday? April 4th. Four, four. It's yeah. my dad's birthday. That's a real player. That's a true <laughs> king. I can tell, man. Wow. I, miss I can tell. Yeah. I miss my dad a lot. Yeah. So, um, you're from Miami. Uh huh. Originally. Dade County. Dade County. Mhm. Mm so, what was it like coming up? It's tough, but to me, it was normal. Everybody I knew went through what I went through. You know what I'm saying? So, it was normal. It made me who I am. It, it, it really did. It fathered me. It, it filled the void for me. Growing up without a father, mm -hmm. I really wouldn't know what it felt like. But Miami kind of stepped in. Probably not in the right ways, but it was there nonetheless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, um... <laughs> for sure. <laughs> 
try not to um, feel interrogated. Um, I won't interrogate you. Um, I'll try not to. Um, when did you realize that you're a poet? Uh, maybe senior year in high school. I probably find out like I got away with words. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I actually master this, I could really get my point across. Yeah, yeah probably senior year, definitely for sure. Right, so the first time that you walked into a studio and laid your first track down, when was that? What grade were you in? How old were you? I was in the fifth grade going to the sixth grade. And I remember it vividly, my homie uh, Quentin. Quentin had a studio. We was in a group called Ham and Cheese. We was in a rap group in middle school. Ham and Cheese, why Ham and Cheese? This some man we played around with, this toying around. I don't know, I was, it was funny. It was real funny. But I remember going to his studio. It felt good, man, you know? It felt real good. You were young. That was like uh, fifth or sixth grade. You what, like 13? Uh, right before middle school, man. I was, yes, I was young. Wet behind the ears. I was yeah. a shorty, man. Yeah, yeah. I had so much innocence in me then, you know what I'm saying? So naive. Mm -hmm. I missed those days, for sure. A lot of us do. Mm -hmm. So, do you uh, create your own instrumentals, or do you have a producer that you work with? I work with different producers, sometimes YouTube. I try to make my own beats and work out the way I want. I'm too light. I be too busy here, there, and everything. I got my hand in too many pots. Yeah. But quarantine helping me slow down and focus on one thing. So, I might be able to master that. Yeah. For sure. So, is it real, like, tedious for you, or how, how is producing for you? Um, I don't enjoy it at all, uh -huh. at all, at all. But well, I, I, I'd rather do it though. Yeah, but yeah. you hear the beat in your head, like you know exactly what you want. Mm-hmm. But just to just producing is hard because you know the beat, you know the sound, you got the cadence. It's the tools. You know, you got to find a program that you know how to work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like life. You got to find the avenue that you can work or that works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same right. thing. Yeah. Um. So, who produced your single, Wavy? Uh, it was a cat on YouTube. He's real dope. Um, we actually had some business going, but he a hardworking cat, man. He shall remain nameless, but he's doing his thing, man. I'm proud of him, you know? Shout out to the homie, man. Where's he from? Miami. Miami? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, do you use uh, people often from here, or is it just kind it of... It varies. Different? Yeah, sometimes it varies. Yeah. I really uh, admire your style of... So, um, you know I mean? Of, um... Yeah, the, the, the instruments that you use in mm -hmm. your music. Um, yeah. I think I heard a flute in there somewhere. Yeah, um, yeah. saxophones, Spanish, the guitar. guitars, uh, right. everything, yeah. So, why do you choose these particular instruments? Your music. I just like instruments in general. Yeah. Like I was a big Marvin Gaye fan, mm -hmm. and uh, they used live orchestras. Like they used to call folks in there to really play instruments mm -hmm. back then, as yeah. opposed to now where it's computerized. And, and yeah, that's how it is, man. I, I I love that type of vibe. I love that sound. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm big what's, on jazz. What's it do to you? I know it gets me in my zone. It clears my mind. You know what I'm saying? It's like. I would say jazz music is therapeutic, so I try to infuse that with a little bit of hip-hop. Yeah. Got a little bit of cool people. Do you um, have a favorite um, jazz artist? Or? Mm, no one famous. Got a couple of local cats I, I'm really digging, but yeah. no one famous. You know what I'm Will you mention them? Um, yeah, my cousin. She, she plays the saxophone. Wow. She's a real big inspiration to me. I'm gonna learn how to play the saxophone before it's all over. It's That's on my to-do list. Yeah. Wow. For sure, definitely. Yo, gay. Chilling, chilling. So tell me about a time that you've experienced something so moving, so touching, where you had to just get in the studio just immediately, just ASAP. Uh. Rest in peace to the homie Shug. Uh, I stay. Right there, like 1370. The apartment next to me, 1374, my homie died right there. It was three kids, two of them died, one got shot. Yeah, two died, one got shot. 
But just coming home, seeing that, it's nerve wracking. You know what I'm saying? It shook a player. Like it had me like. I think we all know what tragedy is, but when it hit home or next door to your neighbors, it's a different feeling, you know? But I ain't never put the song out, but I wrote about it. Got a lot off my chest. I guess it was my way of retaliation, I guess. Yeah. How did you feel after, after you laid the track down? The same, no, to no avail. Would you say that it gave you some type of relief? Not at all. There's nothing that could bring them back, though. Because, like, retaliation doesn't bring them back. Mm -hmm. It just eliminates who you thought the problem was. Right. So. Yeah. Um, just speaking of, um, of just tragedies that happen within your city or just things that happen, like, right at home, mm -hmm. how do you take that and use that as fuel versus an excuse. So, I mean, the way I the way I view life is, it's hard but it's fair. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm actually able to get up and make a difference, not just for me but for my family. So I could either make excuses or I could make a difference. You know? I'd rather not make excuses at all. I'd rather not. I'd rather not complain. Just try to be the solution that I want to see. That's it. Huh, it's interesting that you have this mindset because there's so many things that can um, just alter the mind, like so many things that can happen, so many things that um, one can see, mm -hmm. it'll, you know, just make you go crazy and not even just have any type of hope. So for you to just have that mindset, like how, like how is that even possible? I want different, I want better. Progression, not perfection. If I. I don't know, your thoughts are powerful. I guess if I think negatively, I get negative results. I don't know. I try to think my way out of the pro out of this paradox. Like, shooting my way out ain't gonna work. Behind my way out ain't gonna work. Maybe I can think my way out, you know what I'm saying? Wow. So, positive thoughts, positive vibes. And you realize that a lot of people don't get that. Yeah, I mean, one would say, shit, I ain't really seeing no, uh, no different results from the other man, you know? We all still here, but it's more of a spiritual difference that you will see as opposed to a physical difference. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. You rolling? You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you, uh, do you mm -hmm. have a favorite genre of music? Uh, yes. I love soulful hip-hop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have a favorite artist? Just yeah. overall, not even in that genre. Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye, as yeah. you said before. So what is it about um, Marvin Gaye that you love? I don't know. He was, uh, he spoke to my people. He spoke for the people. He was a man of the people. It's Marvin Gaye here, man, you know? Pushed a lot of boundaries, man. You know what I'm saying? He did a lot of positive things. And what is music still for? He showed others that you can actually make a change through music. They picked up on it and they made a change through music and it helped me realize I can. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I really listen to Tupac and I don't think Tupac would be how he was if it wasn't for Marvin Gaye. Hmm. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm thinking of um Domino I Effect. Marvin Gaye used to sing. Mm -hmm. He had me feeling like black was a thing to be. Facts, you heard me. <laughs> so we have a question from one of your uh, supporters, Perp Gorilla. I he says, like I wanna know what's your mission with music. Uh my mission with music is to well first I would love to bring awareness, spread knowledge, spread love, make a living off my music. Open up some businesses, buy some bandos, leave some properties to my babies, so I ain't gotta worry about that. The next generation will be straight. Try to break generational curses, man. That's really what it's about. Yeah. So why is it, uh, I know this is kind of like 
a vague or like ambiguous question but what why why is it that we choose now or even later to start to break generational curses and not before well mm. i know i know that we had um black wall street and things uh -huh. like that why is it that now it's like less of that why are we more discouraged or i mean shit. i feel like knowledge is power if you kill all the leaders, then who will we have to follow? All our leaders are dead, or accused rapists, or child molestations, and you know what I'm saying? That's why we don't have nobody to follow. Who do we have in the forefront? Like, really, that we can actually relate to. That's one of us. That's from where we from. I don't know. I'm trying to bring that change, though. That's why we got to set the example. We got to do it for the next generations. I feel like generation before me, I guess they kind of dropped the ball, I guess. But they really blessed us with something more priceless than anything else. They gave us knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Taught us principles, man. That's why our morals are so high. Our principles are so high. Respect, you know? Something we try to pass to the next generation. It's priceless. But we got to lead them something more. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I feel that um, they deserve it, mm -hmm. and kids are the future. Factual, you know. Actual factuals, yeah. So, um, depending on what they learn or what they take in, is what is going to be you, you know, presented to their kids and just society. Period. You know. Yeah, man. Children. <laughs> are you interested in signing with a label? I'm not opposed to it. Uh, it's just like a relationship. Got to be the perfect fit. Got to be the perfect companion. Got to be the perfect partnership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there ever really a uh, a contract that's acceptable or something that'll make someone uh, I wouldn't say happy, but satisfied? I guess. Uh, it depends on what you're in it for. Uh, money, material things is in my end goal, so nah, not for me. Mm -hmm. But creative control, um, all my rights, my dignity, <laughs> my publishing, that stuff means a little more to me. Yeah. Right, because I see, I see some people don't have that freedom, like they get told what to do. And when to do it and how to do it. Right, and yeah. they don't really have um, that freedom to truly express themselves how they want to. Yeah. Some people uh, exchange, I guess you could say, their musical freedom for financial freedom. Mm. But who's to say that they're right or wrong, you know, to mm -hmm. each of their own? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You said it depends on what you're in it for. Yeah, it's all about your end goal. What's your ultimate goal overall? For music? Yeah. Uh, I want to live comfortably off of my craft, off my talents. I would love to never have to work for nobody else again. So my next kin, the next generation, don't have to work for nobody else ever again. But it is to break generational curses. That's really the goal. The way that they look at us, the way that we're treated, the way that we're approached, all that. Could we ever really change the way that people look at us or feel about us? Nah, we can change how we care about it, though. We can change how we what? Care about, care it. about it. Yeah, I mean, everybody has an opinion. Mm -hmm. Everybody, like, it's cool. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. how I feel, like. <laughs> if you ain't being talked about or thought about, you ain't doing something right, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta know everything comes with it, you know? It comes with the territory, mm -hmm. yeah. It happens. Yeah. Huh. So, do you have uh, any mentors? Um, Uncle Al. Uncle Al? Yeah. Who's that? Uh, Uncle Al was a local DJ in Miami. Started the Miami Bass Movement right here on 15th Ave. He had the Peace in the Hood festivals. He was actually shot dead on 9-11. Yeah, it wasn't a big thing because 9-11 was, you know, I guess, bigger. But, yeah, he was a big motivation for me. Not just me, though, the whole Miami movement. Uncle Luke was Luke Skywalker. Some rumors that he changed his name in tribute to Uncle Al. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, his actual name was Luke Skywalker, though.
So tell me about Uncle Al. This man for peace. This really started like a peace in the hood festival. Block party from 62nd to 71st. Peace in the hood. Nobody else would even come to our projects. Wow. Yeah. He was a, he was a DJ yeah. local. Mm -hmm. What were you about to say? Wow, just, that's how it be sometimes. But when you take the leaders, what do we have to follow? How was he shot there? I can't tell you. Yep. Fuck Uncle Sam. All I know is Uncle Al. That's real shit. Um, what do you stand for? Um, a lot of things. To be real, if you don't stand for nothing, you know they say you'll fall for anything. But I'm a man of respect. I'm big on respect. Like, you don't even gotta acknowledge me. You don't even have to respect me, just don't disrespect me. That's just how I feel. Yeah. So what made you go against the grain and um, against what we call the norm of rap or music today? Is it really against the grain? I just feel like I'm being me. You only can be you. I mean, we can try to be somebody else, but you're still trying. You can be you though. Felt like it was easier to be me. Mm. Say how I feel, say what I want, do as I please. Be me. Why is it so, I wonder why it's so hard to just be ourselves. The only thing that I can think of is that um, we want to fit in. Society. Mm. Yeah. We just I mean, fit in, but. I grew up in poverty, so I couldn't really fit in with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. I couldn't keep up with the new shoes, the new jewelry, and all that. I learned early. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a fad, know. though. It's all just a trend, you know? It comes and goes. It's nothing real. What's real is what's here. That's what's real. Love, you feel me? Like, who you are when nobody else around you, that's what's real. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, would you say that you're a product of your environment? Ah, facts. Definitely a product of the environment. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me why. I um, made a lot of mistakes. You know what I'm saying? I come from a lot of mistakes, but I made a lot of mistakes. I learned from them. I'm still making some, I'm still learning. But I'm a product of my environment because I'm resilient. Just like they tearing down the hood, they ain't going nowhere though. Physically it's gone, but they ain't really going nowhere. Just like black people. You can take us all you want, we ain't going nowhere. You can hurt us all you want. We ain't going nowhere. Yeah. So I feel like it takes more energy to get rid of something or somebody mm -hmm. um, and hate rather than to love. Like love is just so easy, but I guess it's easier said than done when you've been um, just stepped on and crushed like your whole life. All you know is just, you know, hate or um, just oppression or whatever. But how can we really get to start loving? Loving one another, but first of all, loving ourselves. Facts. You gotta love yourself. Self-love is the best of love. You don't love yourself, you can't love nobody. And you probably won't be loved by anyone either. Mm -hmm. You don't love yourself, but you're right though, self-love. For sure. And how can we start to get to that though? Quarantine. So that's one of the pros of quarantine. It had a lot of pros and cons, but mm -hmm. you got a lot of time to self. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You get to know yourself. You Go find yourself mm -hmm. spiritually, emotionally. We have a lot of uh, a lot of emotional turmoil, a lot of mental turmoil too. A young lady I was talking to felt like she feels. All black men and women between the ages of 30 and 35 should see a therapist. That's what she felt. And I was like, that makes sense. I just feel like, or if you had a spouse you could talk to, you know, as opposed to a therapist. Or if you could talk to yourself. If you loved yourself enough to talk to yourself, you'd see a difference. Mm. Oh, yeah. Do you uh, mirror gaze? Uh, not too much. Mm. But have you tried it? you tried it before? Uh, I tried it. Doing rehearsal. It's just a big room with a big mirror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, nah. 
Does it work at all for you? Nah, I'm gonna give it some more time though. You gotta try it again, you can't just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with yoga, man. Yoga is real helpful. I gotta actually give it a little more. Yeah. Yeah. So when you do yoga, like how do you feel after? I don't really do the whole yoga process. It's more meditation for me, mm -hmm. yeah, more than anything. But meditating is, is very helpful. It's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It helps me. It gets me right. It helps me organize things. So the reason, the reason for meditating is not only to organize, but also to what relieve stress. Uh, I, I feel to each their own, though. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people meditate for different reasons. Some, it, it is to be in touch with oneself, you know, to get in tune with yourself, but it can be for anything, really. Right. Yeah. I really try to know everyone out there who's watching, all the millions, billions of viewers. Gotta meditate, man. Gotta to meditate. What's the process? How do you start? Meditation? Mm hmm. Uh, Where do you start from? Everyone's different, but. Hmm. I need jazz music mm. and uh, water. Mm. Those are my only two tools. So you drink the water, like as you meditate, or mm -mm, before? Mm -hmm. It's just hard for me to start without water. Yeah. I need jazz music before, and I need water before. Uh -huh. Just relaxing, both of them relaxing, right, right. and then I can meditate. That's interesting. Yeah, I can't like go f come from a rave and just meditate. I ain't there yet. Yeah. I ain't, <laughs> yeah, so you I ain't mastered that art yet. Yeah, the transition. So, um, one thing I admire is your variety of style. Like when I listen, um, I hear um, various flows or attitudes. Mm -hmm. um, what really determines your deliverance? Uh, the song. Like, my, I can't write a song. Like, somebody be like, write a song about flowers. It don't really work like that. Mm. I gotta actually be feeling it. So if I ain't feeling it, I can write it. It just won't come out to my best, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Same thing with the emotions. It come with the verses. It come with the flows, because I'm writing it with that attitude, with that mentality. Right. Yeah, it's good and bad. It's, it's, it's great, but then it's bad, because we're on the entry level. We're at the ground level right now, you know? So it ain't like we got studios 24 7 so we can't just capture every emotion when we want you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying so so it's different it's different to go into the booth when you're feeling this way versus writing it down and mm -hmm. then going mm -hmm. so when yeah, you have actually, this experience it's just best to just go in and just let it all yeah out. it works the same for me but it is better you'll mm -hmm. see a better result better experience right. if it's Right then and there, you know so what I'm saying? So when it comes to that, when you have that experience and you go straight to the studio, do you have to write it out or does it just come out? Nah, it just comes out. Yeah, I write it anyway. Well, I really record it in my phone, but I write it anyway, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Creation. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I ain't blessed to have kids yet. Maybe sometime soon, but I think that's how it is having babies. Yeah. The process of giving birth. You gotta be amazing. Painful, but amazing. So so how important is it to create whatever it is? Uh, it's very important, man. That's why women are the most important species on earth, especially black women, but women in general because y'all can create. Y'all are creators. You know what I'm saying? We're we are as well, but we're more so a tool to the creation, you know? Mm. So it's like, <laughs> y'all the stove, we the plug. You know what I'm saying? We work together, but y'all really do majority of the work type shit. And that's how it is with music. Creator, just being a creator. Mm -hmm. Do you think, um, well, beginning to ask this question, I kind of just like answer my own question. Um, does creation keep us alive? Uh, so I guess I should um, go to saying without just giving life, creation in other ways. Does that keep us alive? Yeah, because you're giving life. You know what I'm saying? It ain't life the way we know it as in human life, but it's life. You know? hmm. Songs are vibrations. And life is a vibration. Still living, you know? 
But yeah, I, um, creation keeps everything alive. It's a cycle. Life is a cycle. Right. You create it, it keeps going. You gotta give birth to something. Music, cars, videos, podcasts, interviews, songs. Is that considered the circle of life? Yes, it is. But that's the small circle, though. Most people ain't gonna consider that the large, grand scheme of it. But it is, though. Because if we was here and we wasn't able to create, what would we be doing? Dying out. Yeah, yep. Working backwards. Mm. Facts. Yeah. Gotcha. So, your first mix, not your first mixtape, your last mixtape. Mm -hmm. That was. Coolie Fly with Pilot P. Yeah. Tell me how that came about. Um, I knew Pilot P since middle school. Been vibing with him since middle school. We was actually rapping before it was cool to rap. Everybody was in sports. We played sports too, but yeah. music was our passion. And uh, put together something real cool and something fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. <laughs> it was a classic. It's definitely a classic. Everywhere I go, people holler at me about it. Same thing with my first EP, 33147. That's our zip code over here. And uh, everybody just they fuck with it, you know? They can relate to it. I feel like I'm a great artist for that. I feel like you become a great artist when people who are not going through what you're going through can relate, you know what I'm saying? So I'm getting there. I'll be there, so, for sure. So, how did, how, how do, how, uh, how did you guys create that particular project? I went, I linked, let me think. I went, I linked up with him every day. Two months. Two months straight. Mm. Every day. I miss it, man. I miss that creation process. Mm. Yeah. You miss it, but you're still creating. Mm hmm. I'm hard on myself. It's different when I'm with others. What do you mean? I don't know, I'm tough. I'm real tough on myself. I'm a tough critic. If me and you was to work on a project together, it's different because you're 50% of the project. You're 50% of the decision. As opposed to me working on my own project when I have complete creative control. I'm a little harder on myself, yeah. But I miss the process. I miss linking up with him every day, smoking, going through beats. Where is he now? You can, he's just nah, he, all the way, right? nah, he's working on this project as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I miss that atmosphere, that energy. Yeah. I wish I would have documented it more. We documented it, but a little more, you know what I'm saying? But I miss it. I just miss, you know, because now I'm working on my solo project, mm -hmm. and I just miss being running energy. Um, uh, we actually working on Coolie Fly 2.0. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Is this Man. the first time announcing that? Uh, probably the first time in the interview. I probably announced it at a couple shows. Yeah. And the fans was, uh, uh -huh. they seemed real thrilled. Uh, me and Dez, after doing Wavy, we dropped the project and everybody was like, you know, they was feeling that too. And I think it's time for us to drop another one. Right. So. so on each of those projects, which was uh, the most popular song on both projects? Well, Wavy was the most popular song on a project. It's called A Different Vibe with Desi McFly. Coolie Fly, man, I don't know. There were so many hits on there, I can't really tell you. Uh, it'd probably be Good Heart. Good Heart, yeah. Oh, good nigga with a good heart. Yeah, yeah it'd probably be Good Heart. I like, I like that. Yeah. You have like some real feel good music. Yeah. Like, um, I just kind of feel like I, I, I know you or that I've met you before just listening to your music. You know, I just feel mm. like, like you said, like I can somehow relate. You know? That's the mission. So um, that's a that's a great um, skill or talent to have to just like draw people in. You yeah. know, I don't know how you do it. I'm guessing it's because of your energy. But um, that's yeah. that's an amazing trick to have. Yeah, they say it's because of my energy. I think it's music though. Music is just a universal language. Mm -hmm. Everybody speaks music, even if you don't speak English. Speak Spanish, Portuguese, speak music though. Everybody do. That's how it is. So, um, mm. oh, my forehead is shining. 
I just put some oil in and I get um this hair butter from um Divine Spirulana. Mm -hmm. She got some really good products. What you put in your hair? You want me to tell you on camera or off camera? You can tell me now. All right. I don't even know if you will. Camera rolling. <laughs> All right. It's classified. G14. Water. <laughs> water. Water. Wash your hair with water. Wash your hands with water, too. Wash your hands. But now I don't put nothing in my hair. No oil or nothing? Nothing at all. I do miss, uh, OK, these are one of the perks I miss of having a relationship. I miss getting my scalp greased and my hair played in yeah. and yeah, but I don't got that, so. I be thinking that water, I live in Riviera Beach. I'm from Riviera Beach and I mm -hmm. just be thinking the water is just like fraudulent. Like it thins our hair, it strips our hair. That's what I think. So I don't even like really put water in my hair like uh -huh. that. Oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about this water. Maybe a little bit I'm better. I'm a project baby. baby, man. To me, somebody asked me what's better, Zephyr Hills, Voss, Voss Water, Fizzy water, which one do you choose? It's all the same to me. Exactly. I actually like faucet water. Really? I don't know. I grew up on faucet water. <laughs> <laughs> I like faucet water, mm -hmm. man. We cook our food with it and like I try not to drink it because like all the things that I've heard about Gotta it. Gotta boil like, it. Beach. Gotta boil your water. <laughs> That's too much to go through, huh, for some water, huh? I mean, I don't even think it worked like that for me. Uh, I don't know. But uh, I don't use anything. You have anything you could recommend me? Yes. Divine Spiravana. Mm -hmm. She has amazing products. Right now I have um, I have a hair butter in my hair. I just put it in this morning because it's kind of dry. So that kind of just like moisturizes it and shines it up a little bit. She also has oils. Looks great. And uh, thank you. Thank you. So yeah. Yeah, she's on right on. I'll give you her contact when we're done. Okay. Um, so you just released your single, Brown uh -huh. Baby, which is amazing. Brown Baby, shout out to Desi McFly, man, that's it. Yeah, it's fire, Sonny Zo. Yeah, first of all, who produces track? They shall remain nameless as well, a dope producer, you know what I'm saying, doing this thing, and um, came across the beat, and I was like, whoa. I was gonna put it on my tape, one verse only. It's coming on my tape, one verse only, it's a single. But I have so many solo songs, I'm one of the feature. And I hit Dez up. He hit me back the next day, verse ready to go. Come on, let's go record this. I'm like, yo, you, you man, let's go record this. Uh -huh. I'm like, all right. I love how you guys just kind of like fed off of each other and just like, you know, spoke mm -hmm. to each other, like an actual conversation. Yeah, what's crazy is we actually did the conversation part last. That right. wasn't in the song initially, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a whole different something else there but yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so is it a reason that you chose nina simone to be the mm -hmm. opening of this track um yeah mm -hmm. everything i do got is deeper than the surface you know what i'm saying so hopefully they do their homework and they'll see what's up mm -hmm. so um what was the response like after the release they're going crazy. I love the response we're getting. I'm loving it. Keep it coming. Brown Baby's out right now. Google cool people with Desi McFly everywhere. But how, yeah. How are you all pushing that? We got some promo plans, marketing plans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cross marketing. A lot of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good. I hope that song goes far because it's, it's just supposed to. We spent some real facts in there, man. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of things we probably shouldn't say, but whatever. Why not? You know Big Brother listening. Always. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like... I ain't running from nobody. I ain't hard to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh... There was a line that you mentioned in that song. Uh -huh. And you said, um... See my pain when you look in my eyes. Instead of trying to free my mind, I'm trying to free all the guys. Yeah. What do you mean by instead of trying to free my mind, I'm trying to free all the guys? I mean, we so preoccupied with a lot of things. 
You ain't gonna be able to do everything at once. You know? You will not be able to get five hours of sleep. That's probably not enough even anyway, but five hours of sleep. You probably got to a nine to five. Probably got kids or a spouse. Probably got a side job. Ain't probably wanna free your mind while trying to do prison reforms, trying to free all the homies, J pay slips, visitation, collect calls. Um, sometimes you gotta pick your poison or I guess you gotta pick your vaccine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I be faced with the thing, you either gonna fix, clear your mind, get your mind right, or you gonna try to help your brothers and your homies who locked up, who down bad. I got 13 God kids. Some of them are from past relationships, and some of them are from the homies who are dead and gone or who are locked up. You know what I'm saying? That could be time I could be using to free my mind. 13 God kids. Yeah. And then I also know how it feel. I was actually on the run for some time, so I just know how it is, man. Like, staying at people's place who probably don't want you there, who harvesting you there. <clears throat> it's hard, man. It's hard to get a peace of mind with all that going on. So, you know, we make it do, though. We make it do what it do. And to free, to free the guys. I mean, it's generally speaking, um, theoretically speaking, <laughs> mentally, every, any way I can. If I could break them walls out, I'd break them out of prison. But more so, you got to keep them right. You got to keep their spirits up. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got the key to lock, unlock these bar gates, but I can free your mind a little bit. Let you know everything's straight when you come home or family straight or this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? But how much of, how much you think you're going to free your mind if you're trying to free somebody else's mind? Yeah. Feel me? So it'd be like that sometimes. So is it more important to free your own mind or um, worry about your own mind than someone else's? So my mama, let my mama tell it. She say, I come before you. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Mm -hmm. I come before you. Always put yourself first, but that's easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. You got a lot of people you got to look out for. A lot of people we feel responsible for, even though you probably not. Still feel responsible for them, though. And plus, wouldn't you want somebody to do that for you? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just how I look at it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me personally, um, it's a lot of people that I would want to help. Even my own mama, you know. I but, um, it. If she don't want it for herself, I can't make her have it. And I try and I try, I push, I push, and it don't work. It don't work. Um, I like to think of the the saying, um, "You can't teach an old dog new tricks." Factual. I try to tell her, um, "Hey, don't worry so much. Don't you know? Don't think so much because it's not really gonna get you anywhere. Thinking don't pay your bills, whatever." But she just gotta want it. I, I just try to bash it in her head all day, every day. It don't work. At least um, for me, on my side. But this is the reason that I asked you um, that question, just to get a better understanding. I mean, I feel like we don't feel like most people feel like that. You can't help somebody who don't want to help themselves. But it's just a saying. It's just a cliche. The fact is, you don't want to help. If you can help, you would like to help, too. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you're probably going to keep trying to help, despite the lack of help from themselves. It's just how we are. Can one lose themselves in helping, trying to help somebody? Yeah, you can lose yourself in trying to help yourself. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Never thought of it that way. Yeah. Might be the best way to lose yourself though, right? If you're gonna lose yourself, at least you went down doing something good or something productive. Mm. But you definitely can lose yourself in trying to help somebody else. Yeah. I know a lot of people got shot for other people, or went to jail for other people. I guess they consider that losing themselves or they lost themselves at one point in time for somebody else. Yeah, for sure. Any upcoming projects? 
Yeah, one verse only is coming out. One verse only. Can't wait to drop it. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear that. One verse only. <laughs> yeah, um, it's something special. I'm only dropping one. The whole ideology behind it is people hear my music and like, hey man, your music need to be long enough. It's not long enough. It's too good. We need more. What they tell you? They need more music. Mm -hmm. It needs to be longer. It's not long enough. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, hmm, since it's a demand, okay. If I see all my people helping my people, uh, we do book bag drive, toy drives, and we feed the homeless. Mm -hmm. If I see more come out, supporting and helping, give back to the community, I give them a full length project, a full EP. I don't care if it's 30 songs, 10 verses, each song, but until then you get one verse only. You want to see more music from cool people? I got to see better results from my people. That's just how I feel. Right. So um, why, why choose the EP over an album? What's the difference? Uh, usually EPs are shorter. They used to be longer, but nowadays they're shorter. And uh, intention spans. Mm. Yeah, pretty much it. Mm. Intention spans. A lot of people can't pay attention for long enough. Back then, albums used to be 20 songs long, man. Yeah. Not no more. Three verses each song. Nah, man, you're gonna get eight songs now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe two verses a song nowadays, you know? Yeah. They've, I see they've cut them like really, really short, like two minutes a song. Mm -hmm. like, but That's I, the guess, internet. I guess it's good and bad in a way. It's good because um, it makes the consumer want more, and okay. I guess it's bad in a way because they want more. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, everything is about perspective. So my perspective on it would just be, shit, that's not good, man. Like, it's the internet, though. Mm. It's the internet. Like, it's so easy to release music. You have to keep it short so you can keep releasing more, mm -hmm. as opposed to making it long. You now you gotta wait a little bit. You know they still listening to the last shit. Nah. But what if it was long and had substance? Does that make a difference? Uh, no, not nowadays because as soon as they done listening to it, rapid release, rapid release. Somebody else dropping something back to back to back. So if you want to stay relevant and consistent, you ain't have to keep up. Not I. Nah, player, y'all gonna wait for this knowledge. Y'all gotta wait for these vibes, you know? Yeah. That's me. Yeah. I like that because um, the people want more anticipation. I just feel like for me to get what I want in life, I have to be deserving of it. I have to work hard for it. And I feel the same thing for my people, my fans. I'm gonna give y'all what y'all asking for. Right. Just gotta give me what I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. And in this particular time, you want mm -hmm. more community activities. Mm -hmm. How can we get these started? Uh, you actually can DM me at cool people, email me at cool people, bookingcoolpeoplegmail.com, or you can do it on your own, in your own community. We do give back to the homeless, clothes, shoes, donate clothes, we pick up the clothes, or y'all can drop them off here in the projects. Or you can go to your local shelter. Whatever. However, what's more convenient for you? Spread mm -hmm. love. Spread love to the hopeless. You were in a um, Miami Cypher last year. A few, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Where you performed for Sway, Sway in the Morning. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Shout out to Sway. Um, it seems like he really enjoys you too, like truly. Yeah. Uh, People pull some strings for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can say, but pull some strings. Some people pull some strings for me. Not too many people rooting for me, you know what I'm saying? The underdog, the one from the mud, you know? I ain't got too many, I ain't got nobody on my team, but somebody actually did me a solid and got me in there and I ain't let them down either, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was a tough, sticky situation. 
So, what was that experience like that day? Amazing, man. This is Sway. Sway in the morning. This man interviewed Tupac. Biggie, man. Sway. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, it was live on satellite radio. XM, Shady, something. Man, as soon as I got off the mic, my phone was blowing up. Boy, you on Sway? I'm like, damn, why you even know who Sway is? <laughs> yeah, man. It was amazing. Life changer, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For sure. So, um, anything in the making from that, like, um, did anybody hit you up to mm -hmm. uh, get build on the track? The, or? Built a couple of bridges, more long term. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Shit yeah. Like that. yeah. Sometimes you travel. The last place you've been was mm -hmm. was it Atlanta or? The last place I was Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. New Orleans. Yeah. Yes. I love Mardi Gras. I, go to New I love New Orleans, yeah. man. Do you know Lucky Day? The artist. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amazing artist. Amazing, yes. Jazz. Do you see yourself doing anything with him? Definitely. I can see it. Um, mm -hmm. Most definitely in my vibes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Hell yeah. So you know of his last album, or is... That's his first album, isn't it? I have no album? idea. I actually got put on to the lucky day for my young lady. She's actually really dope. Uh, shout out to LaVe Music. Uh, lady, yeah. Lay V, yes, yeah, she put me on, man. Uh, Do you have a favorite track by him? Nope. The vibes, though, is vibe setting. Throw it on Pandora. So, you know, they actually give you like a shuffle of things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get me right before my meditations. <laughs> it does, man. I be having to listen to something like that. Or well, some Isley Brothers. Yeah, Isley Brothers. You got a favorite track by him? Of course. Uh, what is it? Uh, Footsteps in the dark. Footsteps in the dark. Yeah. Uh, Atlantis, but they got so many classics, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. My favorite song by the Osleys is Caravan of Love. Yeah. How does that one go? I'm your brother. Hey, that's my shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm your brother. Don't you know? We're going to play that, though. Every woman, every man. Join the caravan of love. Yeah. Stand up, stand up. Yeah, that's that funk right there. I like voice Yeah, that Atlantis, man. What up, man? Ronald Osley, I promise his voice is the instrument itself. Shout out to the OGs. Damn, I can't name them like that. I just yeah, they voice. like that. They like that. Um, they got a lot. At your best. That's one of my favorite Aaliyah songs. At your best. Yeah, but it's actually an Isley Brothers original. Mm. Yeah, she remade it. Mm -hmm. They snapped on that. Summer Breeze. They got a lot of songs, though. Choosy, Choosy Lover, who is that by? I know Aaliyah remade it. Uh, is it by Isley? It's, okay. Wow, so. Choosy Lover. So she was, uh, they were significant to her, it seems like. Everybody. It's the Isleys. What does riding the wave mean and why do people do it? Um, excuse my French, but it's dick ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody in our industry dick ride. This is a dick riding industry <laughs> and a dick riding state. I'm sorry. But yeah, it is. That's how it is. That's what people do. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do people? It's easier. It's easier to ride the wave as to create your own wave. Hey, I better not hit my cousin. You got a lot, of, a lot of family over here? Yeah, I have a lot of family over here. A lot of family. You gonna get hit by the car? Hey, 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 you better, you better tighten up, there. But yeah, um, got a lot of family here. So, riding the wave, you said it's easier to do that versus... Some find it easier, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, as opposed to being an innovator, yeah, a trailblazer, thanks. 
Yeah. Wow. So, um, in your music, you mentioned um, uh, murder and um, just various other things. Uh, what uh, type of trauma have you experienced in life coming up? A lot. I'm, I'm sure everybody goes through some type of trauma, you know, mm -hmm. but more so violence over here, drugs, police raids, shootouts. It's normal, though. I'm sure it's normal in your neighborhood as well. And if not in your neighborhood, definitely in your city. I'm sure it's a normal thing. It is normal. It is normal. Yeah. Unfortunately. I was mostly sheltered, so I wasn't like in that or in the streets like that at all. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, Riviera Beach is definitely um, one of the worst of cities. Like we have a beautiful, just like Miami, we have a beautiful side. And, and we have a pretty ugly side, but I feel like the whole city is just beautiful, colorful, uh, vibrant. It's right off the beach. Facts, you know, facts. Riviera Beach is a black city. But of course it's being taken away from us. It's one of the last black cities in Florida. But, well, you know. that's their plan. How would you say uh, it affected you by being sheltered? Uh, I feel like sometimes I could be like socially awkward. Um, that's one way. And also I didn't really get the experiences that I wanted to when I was younger. Also, um, so that means that when I'm in certain situations or in certain environments, uh, sometimes it could be just like um, either just really, really exciting for me or just, uh, just a little awkward for me because I don't know how to react yeah. to certain things. But um, over time, you know, as I got older, I started to just really experience those things so it's becoming i guess easier for me to just um you know take in or just truly just work through mm -hmm. so yeah but i could dig it though i guess it makes me who i am today i'm a little weird i think so but i feel like everybody is that way but they yeah. don't really embrace that you know the way that they can are supposed to like you said, riding away, I feel like everybody is just trying to be like somebody else and not themselves. And Facts. That's what makes them unique or who they are. And we're made to be different. Facts, to man. To come together to create better things. Could you imagine if we all were the same? Hmm? Could you imagine if we all were the same? There'd be no dreadlocks. <laughs> There'd be no uh, rap music. And maybe one genre of music. One hairstyle. Right. Life would be so boring, but I don't think like people realize like it's okay to be different. Like I spent some time just trying to fit in and like be like other people and stuff, but yeah. I realized um, the difference that it makes, or you know how uh -huh. how significant it is to just be yourself. I think everybody go through it. I feel like everybody tries to fit in. The problem is <laughs> some people succeed. So it's an ongoing thing. Hmm. Yeah. Had I not failed miserably earlier in middle school about fitting in, I'd probably be trying to do the same thing too. It's just a natural instinct, you know? Yeah. I'm happy I didn't though, you yeah. know what I'm saying? For sure. For sure, for sure. I think everybody goes through it. So the trauma that you've experienced, how does it affect your everyday life now? Mm. Is this got me on? Okay. I feel I'm more, I don't know, like, I want to say paranoid. I just, I'm always aware. I'm always tentative. I'm always on point. But when I'm um, out of town, I see the difference. So like when I go on the road or, you know what I'm saying? And you meet these super friendly people. But you, your guards are up and it's like, you know, they ain't even on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't in the hood right now. Like, it made me a different monster. Yeah. But traveling the world, music shows you different, though. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to be like that. Mm -hmm. It's actual, true, genuine people out there. Right. Just maybe not what we be every day, but they're everywhere, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. 
And I've experienced that when I uh, went to Jacksonville. I moved to Jacksonville for like a year for college. Mm -hmm. And uh, just totally different. Just totally different because there they're more friendly or, or just more accepting or more warm. You know? Versus uh, this fast life down here. And, um, you know, rude yeah. people. And everybody just moving so fast. Yeah. You know? So I've, I've definitely experienced that. I know what you're talking about. College will do that. College is great for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was so upset when I left, but when I left Palm Beach to go up there, but um, then I started to uh, appreciate it. Hell yeah, man. What? Life is like, I guess adulthood is like final exam. Mm -hmm. That's like college is the pretest. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Something we should take serious, but we play around with it, you know what I'm saying? To the final exam come, and they were like, yeah. oh shit. Yeah, yeah. I ain't never go to college, but that's just how I see it, you know what I'm saying? So, it'll open your eyes up, and if you use it wisely, it'll help you, man. Yeah. But just like most things in life, we find out at the end of it exactly how to use it, you know what I'm saying? Like after a relationship over, it's like, damn, if I was like this, she would've stayed. Or had I treated her like this, it would've lasted longer. It's a learning experience for sure. <laughs> Things like that, I take it. I take it lesson. Especially if you don't learn no, if you're not educated on nothing, book wise, you're definitely gonna learn about yourself mm. and other people in college for sure. So many different, everything, ethnicities, sex, uh, cultures, mm. religions, everything. Right. True. How does Uncle Sam and peers in your community relate? How does Uncle Sam and the peers in my community relate to each other? Mm -hmm. Oh man. Um, I feel like a lot of my peers are brainwashed so they feel like the mission is to take down the black man. Mm -hmm. I know that's Uncle Sam's mission for sure to take down the black man. I think they identify in that way but I think for the most part they really have a lot of things that's not in common besides the brainwash part. Tell me. I mean, we in general are leaders. We are uplifting, caring, loving individuals. That's how black men are. We're stubborn, we're hard headed. Uh, definitely. <laughs> definitely hard headed. But for the most part, we mean well, man. We just have a hard way of showing how we love. But we mean well. We ain't like Uncle Sam. When should we stop asking and start not even taking, but creating our own? Um, I don't know. I can't speak for others, but I, I've been doing that. I don't want nobody else's clothes. Um, I don't buy nobody else's things. Everything in house. Self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you get to that point? I can't That's really. I mean, it's just a mindset, but me, I just grew up without having it. So if you want it, you either go hustle, get the money and buy it, or hustle, get the money and make your own. Mm -hmm. So make my own. Right. So, um, what's your biggest fear? Of not having children. Not having, having children. Yeah. Tell me why. Elaborate. Yeah, leave my legacy. Yeah. I mean, if you tell me a story, and I tell him a story, and he tell a story, it's gonna be different by the time it finally make it to the end person who you want to get to, everybody has their own. Children though, they're your legacy. It's not a story somebody can tell. They represent you and your name. That's the generational curses that we gonna break. So you may feel like I was this, that, or I could have been better, but living and watching from my children's standpoint, they may prove that I was better or that I did better. You know what I'm saying? Right. Definitely. It's the way I'm gonna leave my legacy. Music lives forever and it can live through them. Cause they'll give me grands and great grands and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Factual. Yeah. Who or what is God? Um, to me, God is a black woman. My mama's God. I watch my mama work every day. I watch my mama grind every day. I watch her create something out of nothing every day. 
I watch FP and there cut the lights off. I watch her say, let there be light. For real. Um, my mom was definitely God. Wow. So I guess I'm being interviewed by God. God is definitely a black woman. But I feel like God is also you. Like, look in the mirror, you're God. You know what I'm saying? If you're made in the image of God, God is in you. Some way, some shape, you're God. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm a God. So what's something God can do that we can't do? Uh, I feel like God can definitely, in the spiritual realm, I feel like God can dictate life. Meaning what? Like, who comes and goes. You know what I'm saying? We give birth, and I feel like that's the only life you should be able to take. Justifiably. Yeah. yeah. That's how I feel. Huh. So, um, would you agree that love is the answer to most of our problems? And, um, yeah. Uh, nah. I may feel like love makes it worthwhile, though. Hmm. Like answering the problems. You want to find the answer so you can get to the love. The answer to the problems, I feel like, is accountability. You gotta first look at self, like, where did I mess up at? How can I fix this? How can I make sure it never happened again? That's what I feel like the answer to the problems is. That's how you solve the problem. So obviously God is not this big, gigantic guy that, you know, sits in the sky. Uh -huh. um, so why do we look up while praying or acknowledging God? Uh, misled, but I do feel like it's a spiritual thing, though. But we're misled. Mm. Yeah. You find God right here. You look in the mirror and find God. Look at your child and find God. But look at your mom and find God. But definitely in the spiritual realm, that's why people look up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe, like, believe that heaven's up there, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's another reason why. Wow. Damn. Like you said, um, like stories being passed down, like we were taught this. Exactly. That's why you gotta find what heaven is to you. You gotta find who God is to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Wow. Um, so if we are God, mm -hmm. when we pray, is it safe to say that this is self-motivation or assurance or even reassurance? Mm-hmm. I would say self-motivation, but hmm, I never thought about it like that. Most people don't pray to self. Like, yeah, self-motivation. Well, praying to God, but because you say that, you know, God is within us, like we are God. Uh-huh. So I would imagine that you are saying that we are basically motivating ourselves. Like when you just really think about it, this is just my opinion, what I think. Because like I said, it's, God is not this big, gigant, big gigantic man that's in the sky. Uh-huh. So when we pray, who are we actually praying to? The spiritual realm, the most high, the God, and the spiritual realm. Mm. I feel like we're God physically, like my mom is a physical God, you know? But there's still a spiritual God. So what's the difference between flesh and soul? Well, I think the soul is the who's driving the, the body. It's like a bus. Your body's just a bus. The soul is the bus driver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. Your soul dictates how you are, where you go, who you meet with, who you link with, yeah. who you tie to, who you can't tie to. You know what I'm saying? But For it sure. seems like... We try to, or our flesh tries to control our soul, but yeah. not really knowing that we're like fighting against it, our soul, or ourselves. Uh, it happens in the physical realm as well, as well though. Mm -hmm. Like you can have a brand new car and it controls you, who you are, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The car doesn't, you just let it control who you are. Yeah. Same thing with your flesh. Your flesh don't control who you are, you let it control who you are. You determine what it do. So how how can one reverse that and let 
their soul or their spirit or God work for them. Quarantine. Quarantine. Gotta spend the time answer. with self, man. You mm -hmm. have to. You have to get to know yourself. It's like a relationship. Mm -hmm. If me and you were dating, we would have to build. Have to build a bond. I have to get to know you. You have to get to know me. Same thing. Lock yourself in the room and get to know yourself. Would you say that quarantine is like one of the best things that happened to us? Uh, <clears throat> yes, but don't listen to me. I'm a hustler. I'm not really in society, you know? Mm. There's a lot of people that are suffering from this. Mm. They work every day. They should be working. They're losing money. Can't pay bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people are unemployed. I think I read a third of America. One third, third of Americans one third of America. are unemployed. For me, it's, you know, here or there, but it's some people whose lives are really in jeopardy. Shit, before quarantine hit, it was a couple people who were finna be CEOs. You know what I'm saying? Of country, of companies that are closed now. Mm -hmm. A couple people's stock was here. Yeah. Now stock's here. It's crashing. You know what I'm saying? So. It has its pros and its cons. It's balanced, just like anything else in life. So, um, the reason that we kill one another is because we hate ourselves, ultimately. Uh, we grew up hearing how ugly and stupid we were. Um, not even by outsiders, but, you know, our own parents, you know? Uh -huh. So, um, we may say that we love ourselves, our God, but if we're killing our own kind, it's, uh, we surely can't love ourselves. So, to me, it starts with God. Uh -huh. God is love. But, how can, I know nobody has all the answers. But how do you, what would you suggest that we start doing to just start to just love ourselves or even God or just? I mean, first I feel like we can empower more women. Us as men, we, a lot of, we can be barbaric at times. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of force when we we use force for decisions a lot, war, shit like that. But yeah, but also, uh, I feel like we were misled, man. I don't really feel like we hurt ourselves because we hate each other. I feel like we hurt ourselves because we feel like we're the enemy. You know what I'm saying? We have a far bigger, greater enemy, far greater enemy. But if we knew better, we'd do better. I really don't think we hurt ourselves. So I mean, I don't really think we hate ourselves, nah, I don't know. It's scientifically proven. Uh, can you really scientifically prove hate? Can you scientifically prove a feeling, an emotion? Can you really prove that? I can kill you out of retaliation, not hate. I can kill you out of love too. I can kill you out of power, jealousy, envy, money. Hate as well, but I'm saying I'm giving you all these other reasons why I can hurt you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that to say, can you prove that hate was the underlying reason why all these happened? So why is there a thin line between love and hate? What does that mean? That's a very thin line because they are the most powerful emotions we have. I'm not sure if you ever been truly loved besides family, but it's magical. Like to truly love somebody and for somebody truly to love you, like really, really love you. That shit crazy, it's powerful. Same thing with hate. Same thing with hate. It's powerful. Very powerful. Yeah, it be like that. Are they ultimately the same? I uh, have similarities. It's a big difference though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. Yeah, it's a big difference though. I'm not cheating.
I want a frozen cup so bad. A frozen cup? Yeah. What, a lily dilly? Yeah, that's what they call it in other places. That's what they call it in other places? <laughs> Where is that? Next block. I know he ain't running up with that motherfucking phone. Not that phone. If you could remove anything from the world, what would it be? Racism. Why? Tell me why. Because I'm black. That's why. We go through racism. One thing we're not, we're not racist creatures. That's just not us. We will look past somebody who's racist or somebody we won't like before we discriminate against them. We do discriminate. We do racist things as well. But usually because of retaliation. It's because of built up anger and what we was taught. You know what I'm saying? It's not like us. Retaliate against who or what? The system. Or what we taught. We see our parents go through it. I know police ain't good. They know they ain't good. The kids know they ain't good. That's not good though. White neighborhoods, they see officers not here. The kids see the police and they, you know what I'm saying? They shouldn't see it like that though. Definitely racism. Yeah. Um, I believe at some point or in certain cases, they are uh, good cops, but yeah. um, they somehow have to um, come together because I, I feel like it's just more uh, cops that are just fraudulent or um, just not good. So Thanks. the good ones have to, you know, follow suit. And, um, you know, it's that brotherly connection or vibe or whatever. Or we can, or we get our own, protect our own. Uh, Nation of Islam do it. Well, we can't do it. Own cops, own community. Why not? Mm -hmm. Own president, own neighborhood, hospitals, actors, everything. Where, where, where can that happen, though? Uh, that's the biggest problem or biggest question I have is where, not how, not why, where. Need some land. Buy your own land, buy your own property, ownership. That's the way. Like Wall Street? Mm -hmm. Rebuild? Mm -mm. It could be learn from them, learn from their mistakes. Make it 30 times better. Mm -hmm. That's not hard. Just take the higher ups, all the black billionaires, black millionaires, all that. I would hate for it to be destroyed, though. I hate to be a pessimist. Uh, it only can only be destroyed if you're not protected and you don't have your own army. Mm -hmm. America, bullies. You know how America ain't being destroyed? They got an army. Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna have some motherfucking fight. That's how we gotta be. Yeah. It's gonna happen. They're trying to kill us here. You don't think they're gonna try to kill us when we separate? You gotta be prepared, man. You can't stop what somebody gonna do to you. You can only stop how you react to it. What would you like to say to the people that admire you? Um, I'm human. I fall short sometimes. Uh, but uh, I mean well, man, my heart is pure. You know what I'm saying? I'm learning, I'm just a man. And we can do this. We're gonna bring change. We got this. Don't give up on me yet, y'all, you feel me? Don't give up on me yet. Like to the nah, just uh, find a new way to spread love every day. Cause nothing but heart to spread love. That's it. Poke a bean to the hut. Sure. That has been cool, people. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate TV. you. Thank you. Don't turn that down. <laughs> Thank you for coming. How many questions you had? Let me see. There was so many. I skipped through some. Ah, locks projects.
That's my real name, by the Slow way. Slow Mo. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you going to Wall Street? No. Nah. Like a handicap match, I'm trying to beat the odds. Uh, knowledge is the power, so I teach the squad. Uh, Looking at the deck, I'm trying to pimp the cards. Niggas running with the hope, but can't walk with God. Fact charges to the game, I'm trying to swipe the card. The way she grabbing on my balls, think my nuts are large. You niggas stuck the flaws, I'm trying to fuck the broad. I'm trying to buck the odds, trying to buck the sergeant. Go way up, niggas gotta pay up. Huh? Like I'm levitating, boy, a nigga trying to stay up. Huh? I'm 165, so I'm trying to get my weight up. But I'm hard in the paint like I'm trying to make a layup Damn. Niggas get to hating when they see you on your way up Hard ice cold so I told your girl skate up Yes, she slept on me so I hit her like wake up Not a girl give me face like hey. motherfucker hey. make up hey. Stay up, never change the flow cause I was trained to go and get the dough Put it under my match my my match. never change the flow cause I was trained to go and get the dough Put it under my match my match Cause never change the flow cause I was trained to go and get the dough Put it under my match my match never change the flow cause never change that flow Cause never change, 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 change